Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Global Education's Virtual Expo. It's Monday evening in South Africa and Zimbabwe. We've got another webinar for you here. It's the National College of Ireland. And if you aren't sure of who they are, you're going to learn very quickly why we like them, why we support them as well. Um, you've got access to some great information here. So please put your questions in the chat box and the Q&A section. My name's George. I work at Global. Um, I'm working here with, with Michael. Michael is our, in country, or, sorry, our country representative, our recruitment manager in Ireland, who we work with on a day-to-day -day basis. And he's the person who you'll be speaking with directly here today. Um, so without further ado, Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you, George. Thanks very much. Um, so I'll just quickly share my screen. Um, just give me one second. I will share this and optimize this. <clears throat> All good, Mike. We can see that. Super. So, uh, yeah, my name is Michael Galvin. I'm the regional manager for the, at the international office for National College of Ireland. Um, and today I'm going to tell you a bit about Ireland as a country, a bit about studying in Ireland, and I'll tell you a bit more about the courses that we have to offer for students in, in, in Ireland. Um, so where are we based, our location, uh, Ireland, centre of the world, close to the UK, if you're coming from South Africa, Zimbabwe, it's it's a good uh, <clears throat> it's a good flight. Um, no direct flights, but you, there's multiple airlines that fly in. You can fly in about 60 different airlines, just shy of five million people. So population is quite small. Um, and yes, Ireland does look like a teddy bear sitting on the side. Uh, it is you know quite uh, jagged looking on the left, but it is a it is a small island compared to. Uh, the rest of, of Europe. So we are based in the European Union. We're the only English speaking country left now in the EU. Um, so you might have seen the European flag before. Um, so you're looking at your future, where you want to go. Ireland's a fairly safe country. We're a neutral country. Our police don't carry guns. We're, we don't have any army uh, based out in any active war zones apart from uh, peacekeeping. So quite safe place, quite, quite young population as well. So it's a good place to be a student. Um, and, you know, we speak English, there's an old Irish language, nobody speaks it, you don't have to learn it. Um, we just learn it at school, but nobody speaks it, I wouldn't even speak it at home. The Cade Mila Falcha means 100,000 welcomes, and basically you'll receive a big warm welcome when you do come to Ireland, if you choose Ireland as your, as your study destination. Um, Ireland is a beautiful country and there's a lot to see there as well, so, you know, there's a lot of beautiful sites in the countryside and, and some of these locations have been used for films some in hollywood films this was used in game of thrones if anybody watched that this is monks lived here in the fifth century skellig michael star wars used this as a destination for uh, some of their film sets um, and our, it is a wonderful a great place to come and you know enjoy and create good memories as well um, I suppose you're looking at your, your future and where to go and it's an exciting time going to a new country and uh, setting up a new life, studying something different uh, and trying to embrace uh, what's there. But at the end of the day, you know, you are building experiences as well and building um, perhaps your CV and to potentially go and get a job after your studies as well. So we want to like talk to some companies as well and kind of the main soft skills they're looking at for, for graduates coming out. And Ireland's a place that you can build up skill sets as well. Um, through working part-time, internships, placements, etc. And at the end of your studies, you should have a good, uh, apart from your, your, your technical ability, have a good uh, uh, soft, soft skill set to go in and work in any, any role. Um, Ireland does have a high quality education system. I think about 55% of the adult population hold a degree an honors degree. And in Ireland, you find a lot of people will go on and maybe do master's programs or professional exams as well to complement their education. So you'll find Ireland is quite a smart, a smart place to be. It's generally a, a knowledge economy. So it's a lot of uh, knowledge companies there in, in um, like technology, pharmaceutical, medical devices, somewhere on the manufacturing side, but a lot of it's in, in the knowledge base, the design stages. Um, the economy is quite fast growing as well. Even last year during COVID, we still recorded, a, a, I think it's 3.9% growth in our GDP. Um, so we are a small nation, but we have a lot going on in the country. 
<clears throat> as a student then, when you come here, you're able to work part-time as well. So there's an opportunity to work part-time, uh, maybe in hospitality jobs or shop jobs during, during your college, during your term, you can work up to 20 hours per week. And we have quite a high minimum wage. So the minimum wage in Ireland is currently 10 euros and 20 cent per hour. So that's, that's quite a high wage for a student. And that's the minimum wage. You can't get paid less than that. In Dublin, in fact, most people get about 12, 50 or 13 euros per hour. And then during your holidays or at Christmas time, when there's about six weeks off classes or during the summer when there's about four months, if you're taking undergraduate program, you're allowed to work 40 hours per week. And it's an opportunity. You can either continue on your, your sort of part-time work or you can get an internship. And all the big companies do take on students in uh, in roles, paid roles during the summer. So an opportunity to maybe like, like the PwC take students in or um, HeadServe, the, some of the hedge fund companies and all, all the big companies will take students on, uh, especially in your maybe penultimate year. They like to take students on as well. And, and, you know, if it works out, they'll tell you, you know, if you do well in your degree, come back and, and there's a job there for you uh, upon graduation. So it's a good opportunity to get experience as well. It's not just to earn money, make new friends, fit in within the, the community that you're in. So when you do graduate, then there's stay back work visas in Ireland. If you finish a degree, you've, you can stay back for a year, finish a master's, you two years. And then there's other employment permits and critical skills work permits to keep uh, you working if you find, when you find a good job within a company. Um, Dublin is a, technology hub so pharmaceutical companies in Ireland are mostly based down in at the southwest of Ireland and Cork and um, Dublin has a lot of tech and financial companies and um, on the financial company side they're the biggest destination in the world for say hedge funds uh, asset managers a lot of private equity companies based there so if you're interested in finance accounting uh, or general business there's a lot of roles there for for the internet or, or computing companies, everyone knows Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, they all have their European, Middle East, African headquarters based in Dublin. So back in the 80s to 1980s, you had the likes of Microsoft, Intel, Dell come and set up in Ireland. And they, they found a, quite a young, educated workforce, spoke English, close proximity to America, only like a six, seven hour flight to New York. And, and so they could operate in the same, you know, within, within a given day, they could have you know, business conversations in San Francisco and in Dublin within the same sort of uh, uh, time time day. So they found Ireland a good destination. So you have had hundreds of companies come over and set up their uh, headquarters, their European headquarters in Dublin. Um, and and because that builds up a good talent pipeline, you know, there's more and more companies setting up all the time, which, which, which is great for us. Um, but they find it hard to find uh, find talent as well. So they do take a lot of graduates in because the best way to find a student is through the graduate program. Otherwise, trying to find uh, specific skill sets, they might have to recruit in Europe or pay for uh, uh, people to come in from outside of Europe. So National College of Ireland, I suppose uh, our location, we're in the center of Dublin, right in the city center. Um, in the heart of the IFSC, which is the International Financial Services Centre. We have our own Lewis stop on our doorway. Um, that's kind of a map of, of Dublin. Um, it's small. If you're comparing it to maybe London in the UK, Dublin's tiny. You can actually walk across it. There's great transport links. You can get the nice scenic spots quite quickly if you're interested in maybe downhill mountain biking or hiking or trekking in the mountains. Um, it's quite safe to do. We don't have any uh, wild animals in, in in Ireland. No snakes or anything anything that can take you down in the middle of the night camping in the in the, in the mountains. Um, Phoenix Park is where the president lives. You can go to visit his house. There's deer roaming around, um, and it's one of the biggest wild parks in Europe. But a lot of students hang out around that that monument um, when it's sunny at the at the weekend. Um, so you can see other other uh, universities and, and stuff. Ireland was, or sorry, Dublin. Dublin's quite an old city. In it was over, a it was a thousand years old in 1988, um, and is known as a Viking city. So the Vikings were the first to come in, then the Celts, the Scots, the English, and they all left their their own kind of um, uh, culture in the city to a certain extent. So you do have parts of Dublin Castle there, um, 
the, the old the old castle walls that are still there. So it, it's a cultural city. You can actually walk everywhere within that uh, within the city. You can see Jameson Distillery. You might have heard of Jameson Whiskey there over on the left. So from there to say campus, that's about a 25 minute walk to give you a sort of scope on the map. Um, but it's very cultural. A lot of museums and stuff, stuff you can do for free. Viva Stadium is where Ireland played their rugby. Um, and then we also play a, a, our own sports called Gaelic football and hurling. So if anyone who wants to YouTube GAA hurling, you can see um, uh, the sort of hurling, the different GAs, the sports, Irish sports that are unique to Ireland um, and amateur. But rugby, rugby is quite popular. Rugby cricket. And I know in South Africa and Zimbabwe, people play water polo and other sports like that, which might not be as popular in Ireland, but there is teams uh, and clubs available there too. Um so the IFSC is the International Financial Services Center. And this area has become known as Silicon Docs because you've had Google and LinkedIn are in there. Uh, Twitter, I think, are in there as well. HubSpot. And you've got a whole host of other uh, companies. So mo most times when a big company pops up there, you'll have a spatial network of other uh, companies pop up around it, uh, which is great because within five, 10 minute walk of our campus, you have uh, loads of these companies with great graduate jobs and good um, good salaries and good, good opportunities for graduates afterwards. I'll just play you a short video. Hopefully you can hear it. When someone comes to you for employment or progression, that they have a, an international qualification, whether we like it or not, actually is a very positive uh, thing to have in your curriculum vita. Irish graduates are high in demand on a global basis. We have had a very strong tradition of attracting international companies into Dublin. So within a stone's throw of National College of Ireland, you have big brand international companies like Morgan Stanley, like Google, like Facebook, like LinkedIn, like Twitter. They are all around us. Technology companies, big business companies, international banking companies. And to support that, you also have the big professional service companies like PwC and ANL Good Bodies and, and KPMG and so on, Deloitte. They're all here in this area. We maintain the links with industry by inviting them in regularly to meet with us and our students in the form of guest lectures or also as part of the assessment process. You can go to business breakfasts, you can come to one of the many employer presentations we have. There's careers fairs, loads of different employer events. So we'd have at Citibank, AIB and Bank of Ireland would all have done a presentation on campus. EY came in and talked about data analytics opportunities that they had. The employment ratio is 96% consistently for a number of years. The likes of Facebook and Google and Intel and PayPal and LinkedIn and, and all of these fantastic career opportunities that go with these companies. There's also one-to-one -one mock interviews available for any student who uh, has been called for interview. When I was going to my first interview, I gave her the job description and she gave like a list of questions that the interviewer could ask and out of 10 questions, around 7 or 8 questions were asked, so yeah. All master's graduates have a guaranteed stay back option to work in Ireland for two years. The ability to improve and enhance your language skills, your ability to socialize differently, to engage differently, will all mean that you're a much more attractive proposition for an employer. But you will also gain tremendous skills and will really help you to present yourself as a potential employee to a major international company in the future. So there's just a quick, uh, quick video. So what we do at NCI, just to highlight maybe some of the, the areas. So we're in, like we have computing, general business, marketing, it's accounting and finance, human resource management, a degree in psychology. Um, we have undergrad and postgrad programs. Um, I'll tell you a bit more about them in a, a couple of minutes. I suppose, I suppose we're about sort of excellence and standards and support um, and education. We have a motto of not leaving any student behind. So we have quite an accessible college. Um, and, you know, I suppose some of our students say that, you know, it does give them an edge. I suppose where our location is, is great, you know, quite close to all those big companies. 
Um, also, all of our programs are QQI accredited. So if you go and work abroad or continue to study abroad, um, you know that your NCI degree can stand to you. Uh, for, for an academic year, I know your Southern Hemisphere, we're up in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, so our, our, our main intake starts in September for undergraduates. And then we do have postgraduates postgraduate students or uh, courses sorry master's level starting in September and in January but for undergraduate it's it's only a, a September intake um, and our, our academic year is marked out into semesters and um, it's a bit different to high school uh, it's what you might have called subjects are now called modules um, and then every module is worth 100 percent and it usually breaks down to 70 percent per exam and 30 percent for continuous assessment so unless you're doing computing you might have 50 50 um, you start every semester with a new set of, of, of subjects or modules, and um, each one with a, a set of exams then at the end of each semester. So two semesters, and then you've got the summer off for undergraduate. If you're doing postgraduate, you've got three, three semesters, and it's one year, and your third semester is a, a dissertation or a research project. Um, so you know, continuous assessment makes more dynamic, you know, you have regular continuous assessment, maybe projects, group projects. Um, and I suppose you get to see how well you're doing during the year because you get marked on them as, as, as things go along. And um, we, we are we are a small enough college. So if you do study with us, you know, classes will be small. You probably get to know everyone in your class and uh, you probably get to know your lecturers as well. Um, and there's a lot of personal supports there as well. Uh, for students throughout the, we have a learning and teaching center um, at the front of our campus. And so you might want academic support, math support, IT, IT support. You may not want any of these at all, but I suppose in some ways it's useful to know that the supports are available in case in case you need to pop in. Um, so I'll just skip on to the, the program. So just kind of all, all, of, our, all of our programs listed. Um, so I, I kind of go through some of them. Our undergrad programs are either three years or four years. Um, and we have some scholarships available as well, both academic merit and sporting. Um, on, the, on the undergrad side, BA in business. So in year one and two, you get to do a bit of everything. And then year three, you pick a specialization, whether it's general business, international business, or entrepreneurship. Maybe you're thinking about setting up your own business. Um, you can add an extra year in there and do a one-year placement and make it a four-year degree rather than a three-year degree. And we have that option built into all of our uh, uh, business degree programs. So if you want to do that extra year, it come, falls in your third year. So you would do two years, then take a year placement and then come back and do your specializations in your fourth year. Um, so BA Human Resource Management, this course for people who want to work uh, in the area of human resources uh, so be working with the staff of a company and because all these big companies are here there's a lot of big human resource departments so you could be involved in like hiring firing conflict management and um, all these big companies would have it all the way up to executive level so it could be involved in like executive compensation training um internal conflict you know the selection it could be on the recruitment side you might end up working in a recruitment agent or working for the likes to say the linkedin um which is a massive online kind of networking and recruitment company um or some of the big recruitment companies like hayes or cpl which would be the biggest agencies in in, in dublin um so if you're interested in the staffing side of business it could be a, a good a good opportunity for you on BA marketing practice, um, if you're looking at things like your interest in maybe advertising, consumer behavior, digital marketing, or sales, um, essentially, I suppose Google uh, and Facebook, a lot of their business is advertising. Um, and so, you know, every, every company out there has a marketing, every big company has a marketing team. Um, everyone has a marketing team, so you know they want people that you know maybe looking at analytics. They're looking at Google, doing advertising, um, creating, uh, doing public relations and things like that. So depends might be an interest, an area of interest for you. Um, accounting and finance. Then I suppose if you're interested in business, but more interested on working with on the figure side. Uh, even though traditionally accountants were more just figures, now they're more involved in the business decisions 
of a company and even within some of the professional accountancy qualifications they've integrated a lot of IT and data analytics and fintech related subjects into those uh, programs so the BA in accounting finance is quite good as well in NCI you get full exemptions from the chartered and ACCA uh, accountancy qualifications upon completion of the three-year honours degree. So you get a good grounding in accounting and finance um, and you also get to pick some some options as well, whether you want to maybe do tax or, or, or audit uh, more heavily in your in your final year. Um, so there's good opportunities in that as well. Like, because uh, you have exemptions, if you do that, you, you get full exemptions, say, you're going to save yourself time um, time and effort to have to do extra accountancy exams when you go out working. A lot of students might go into, say, like to PwC and do a three-year contract where you'll have to work for the three years and take your exams at night time. But if you have exemptions, you've, you've saved yourself a lot of pain. Um, and then we have a, a three-year degree in psychology. It is recognized by the PSI, the Psychological Society of Ireland. Um, uh, and this is uh, sort of standards respected uh, in the industry. So if you want to become a qualified psychologist afterwards, it needs to be PSI um, accredited. Or if you want to go into uh, a master's, uh, you'd probably need that as well. And it, it covers general areas in the sort of first years. So you're doing everything from like clinical, child, you do criminal psychology. So it covers a lot of areas. It's quite an interesting, uh, interesting program. Um, um, it is the, the highest entry for, for, for psychology. They only accept about 10, 15 international students on it per year, and it's a small enough sort of program. Um, and then last but not least on the undergrad side, BSc in computing is a four year honors degree program. Um, the first two years, they teach you everything, uh, give you all general knowledge. In the third year, you have a six month work placement. And then your fourth year, you get to choose different specializations such as like cloud computing, data analytics, internet of things, um, you can do computer game, computer game design on the computing side or artificial intelligence. There's, there, I think there's about seven specializations you can choose. So in your, in your third year, you can get out and use the the subjects you did in the first two years gain some experience and then yeah get to you'll know by your fourth year what what areas interest you so you'll get to choose a specialization um and then there's, there's plenty of graduate jobs in in computing in ireland so it could be an opportunity for you to go and get a job or um maybe you want to progress on and do a master's in a specific area um i'll just quickly go through the postgraduate areas on our computing side, we have uh, an actual international partnership with universities in America, Berkeley, Cornell, and um, St uh, Stanford. On the computing side, there's Professor Ullman over there. He's, he sits on the global Google board but he, himself and two other professors and some of our professors and Professor Horacio um, Velez in cloud computing and NCI developed uh, programs about in six, seven years ago um, in data, cloud and fintech that would mirror, that would set up students for the Silicon Valley in California. Ireland was known, becoming known as the European Silicon Valley because of the setup of all the companies here. And they wanted to make sure that students coming out um, of master's programs over there had the same kind of uh, skill sets and, and knowledge areas and were studying the same areas. So they created a center of excellence in Ireland for cloud computing and so set that up on NCI. So cloud and data are quite popular programs on a master side. Um, so data analytics is a big area as well. But basically students, if you're coming into these, you need to have a good grounding in computing, computer science, computer engineering, software engineering, um, and then choose this and focus uh, for your master's programs, which are all one year. Um, and there is some good scholarships if you're progressing from the degree into the master's programs. Um, cybersecurity, which is popular in FinTech, which covers areas like blockchain development, crowdfunding, financial markets, etc. So it's an interesting area, especially now with the rise of say, uh, disruptions of, of finance, like cryptocurrencies and other areas like that. Um, Postgraduate business then as well, we have one year masters in human resource management, 
management, international business, finance, marketing, uh, and entrepreneurship. So I, I just, there's a lot of information on our website and I can discuss through that as well. Just um, I suppose some of the typical questions that the students do ask, are, like if I study at NCI, can I get a job? And, um, you know, w one of the key selling points, I suppose, of NCI is that we have quite a high success rate in placing students into employment. And I, I know re we had 96%, pretty sure the careers team, I think they said they're up at 98% now. So they hold a lot of on-campus career events, they hold CV clinics, help you with your interview prep, and um, they help you uh, mock interviews, get a, help you find a job and try and walk you through the interview and help you all the way. So they have quite a high employability rating because where we're located, we've great links with industry and a lot of job opportunities for, for graduates due to as well the fact the location, but also a lot of the companies come in uh, when we're designing programs and creating programs as well. They'll come in and, and, and engage. And we have associate faculty and full-time faculty. So associate faculty are people that are working full-time or part-time in industry and they're coming in and teaching part-time. So they're bringing in real, real sort of uh, real life cases into the, into the classroom, um, which is great. Um, some of the companies that have recently recruited NCI graduates and are based in, in, in Dublin, in Ireland, um, you'll probably know some of the, the bigger names like Apple, smaller ones like AIB is an Irish bank. Um, so, you know, is there more, sometimes people ask, there's more to NCI than study? Because I know, you know, you're there in schools and you're interested in sport and social. Like we have a great students union, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of clubs and societies. Um, and then it's a lot of social weeks like Rag Week and Freshers Week and Mental Health Week. So it's a lot of clubs and societies, balls and sports balls and stuff like that. So it's good to, you know, get involved in the society, maybe continue on your hobby. You might want to join, you know, one of the committees. It's not all just sports. It could be societies or if you have an idea, you can set up your own society. Um, if there's enough interest in it, there is there is good sports teams and um, there is some sports scholarships attached there as well. Um, you need to be playing at a, a decent provincial level. And um, I think the scholarship is currently about 30 uh, percent on your on your off your fees every year for the years you're there. Um, you get free gym membership and some branded sports merchandise as well, I think, as part of that sports scholarship. Um, and there's some academic scholarships too. Like I, I always happily share my, my WhatsApp details as well with students in case uh, and parents in case anyone's on and they want to send me follow on questions. Um, but Global Education organized this and I've been in South Africa and Zimbabwe with them a good few times to, to meet students and parents. Um, and they are very good at the good thing about, I suppose, Zimbabwe, you need a visa to come to Ireland, South Africa, you do not. If you happen to hold a South African passport, there's no entry visa to Ireland. Uh, currently, we've now, we removed all the, pretty much every country from the hotel quarantine. For COVID, we have, I think, 86% of the population fully vaccinated. Um, and the government, they're opening up all restrictions from the, I think the 20th of October. So our plan is to go back on campus uh, this September. Our campus is open now and um, our students will be coming back. So last two, uh, well, last year, unfortunately, it was all online, which wasn't the best experience for students, but this year we're prepared and, and, uh, and ready to open again. So, yep, yeah, thanks for listening and happy to uh, uh, answer any questions that people might have. I'll just stop sharing that for the moment. Yeah, all good. Michael, thanks very much. I really appreciate that. And for somebody who's new to global in terms of learning about Ireland as well, I found it fascinating the amount of business connections that are there. Um, and then the wheel clog was just turning in my head and talking with students was, you, you're studying in a small environment, which is great. You, know, you, you get to focus on what you really want to do and your passions. And then you've got that business connect um, are those career services and support services available post study? Like, if you had an undergrad, are you still able to use those services? Um, yeah, no, they still connect with uh, alumni, and they still offer it out to alumni. But they have, you know, they have those career fairs as well. So you have you have companies coming on, so you're able to meet companies. We also bring back alumni, so you get to meet 
alumni from their program, maybe probably from their country and how they found uh, applying for jobs, how they got the jobs. But yeah, they do extend the, the career support out to alumni as well. Um, they try and engage with alumni a lot as well because some alumni will go on to be hiring managers in the future. So, you know, it's good, it's good to keep that 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 open. But yeah, they do um, hold alumni events and career events. And uh, uh, we have some scholarship students as well. We have like Future Leader Scholarship Program. Um, so we have like a batch of about 20 students. It's only on master's every year. But the, you need a first class honors degree to apply for that. Um, there's 50% scholarship on that. But they were all they all go off working in the industry straight away and they connect with them usually try and uh, bring in more graduates as well in the companies yeah i just it's always one thing i always stuck back with my degree was you know how much i didn't take advantage of those career and support services and there's something that we try to push with all our students is really take advantage of them they're there and they're free as well yeah um, I know when I was in college, there was no career support, <laughs> yeah. but, but that was oh, I graduated goodness. 20 years ago. So <laughs> yeah, Michael, um, I wanted to ask you here, I've got a couple of questions from the student manual. Thank you very much for your questions. Really do appreciate it. I'm going to read them out. Maybe we can just answer them all at once. Um, he wanted to know how long would the process start when applying to NCI and how long does, does study lead to permanent residency here in Ireland? And then the third question was the age requirement. So we, maybe we could answer all in one. So study, uh, it's one year, like each, each, the undergrad business is three years, computing is four years. When you finish, um, you can get a one year uh, stay back work visa for undergrad. If you're working in specific occupations and there's a whole list of different occupations from uh, computing chartered accountancy software sales some marketing roles um, you can get a critical skills work permit you can get a general employment permit once you find a job and the company wishes to keep you on um, and your salary is over 30,000 per year which is generally a lot of graduates will get 30,000 per year and after a year should go up and um, once you're after you graduate, when you're working full time, if you're working for a period of five years, then you automatically become a resident, permanent resident, and you can then apply for, uh, if you want, uh, citizenship. So you can apply for an Irish passport at that point. If you get a critical skills work permit, you can you can stay working indefinitely on that. You don't have to apply for an Irish passport. Uh, the Irish passport, it doesn't. Specified, you have to only hold that. You can hold that and your original passport. So, um, that's that's one option. Um, sorry, what was the third question? Um, age requirement. Minimum age is eighteen. There's no no maximum. No maximum. If that answers all your questions. Please just do let us know as well. And if you'd like to mention what course you're looking at, we can go a little bit further into that conversation. <laughs> Michael, um. Got another question here for you from some counselors that we have on the on the webinar. Um, they were asking in terms of the um, the postgraduate courses that that are offered. Um, when it comes to that study, that those lecture classrooms and the technician, like maybe in um, you know the computing sciences and that, are those classrooms really engaging? Um, or do you have a lecture that's basically just reading? Like, how does the postgrad classes in a small university work? No, they're quite engaging. Yeah, for postgrad computing, postgrad, you, the max size is fifty-five. So it, it, it's it's not even not like I know in some universities at undergrad you go in there could be five hundred people in the lecture hall. Or the max is about sixty. Uh, some classes like psychology have forty. And um, at postgrad, yeah, postgrad computing, you're looking at fifty-five for 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 maximum uh, class size. So they do tend to fill up as well. I know for say masters in data analytics, it was full in July for September, uh, and it's usually full by end of October for the January intake. And there's two classes running side by side. It's probably the most popular masters program in the tech side, uh, based on 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 sort of demand from employers in in ireland for or globally um so yeah there is there is good engagement and it's all in labs you're not sitting in classrooms uh, you're sitting you bring your does it bring your own device um policy so there's certain uh, specific 
uh, device policy devices that you have to get and bring yourself like a laptop. Um, and so you're sitting in labs all the time with your, with your own device usually. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it is quite engaging and it's practical by nature. Like you're not going to be sitting there. There's no, so there's no one sitting there writing code on a, on a board. <laughs> so yeah. it, it, it's, it's, it's very engaging, you know, um, and, and, and because some of the lecturers as well are associate faculty, they'd be coming in from having worked in, in certain roles um, and then be coming in doing maybe a couple of hours teaching. And then, so there is good engagement and good, good sort of live cases and project brought in to the classroom as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and then especially when you've got like those board members that are from Google that you mentioned, um, yeah. Lecturing as well. I just think that's fascinating in terms of the actual work that you're learning. You're not just learning, you know, from a syllabus book, you know, or a lecture book. You know, you're learning practical skills. Um, you know, every, everything is relevant. You know, when we're designing programs, like I said, we engage with industry as well. And even there's new programs um, starting next September, masters in artificial intelligence. And there's one for a masters in artificial intelligence for business transformation. So, I'll, I'll, you know, they're kind of always uh, looking at programs that are relevant to the, the future needs of industry. And, you know, they obviously go out and talk to, um, key industry figures to see what what are the skill sets, what are what 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 are the sort of you know skills that you need people will need in one two three four years time sort of thing, and then they adapt and uh, change it. All the programs that are under the accreditation system every every five years they have to go under a quality review. So you have uh, government and other industry uh, people coming in. So it'd be like say lecturers from other universities will come in and do a, a review of the programs to make sure they're relevant, modern, and and uh, and fit for fit for purpose for for students coming in. So that you know, there's no point in doing a course if afterwards you can't get a job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, in terms of the school fees for both undergrad and, gr and graduate, Manuel here is asking, um, what do those look like? Manuel, if you want to let us know your course as well, we could look into that. Um, and he's also asking then in terms of applying for a scholarship, how would that work as well? Sure. If he's looking at masters, um, all, all of our tuition fees at masters are 15,000 euros per year. We do have scholarships based on um, academic. So they have, these are just set at the moment. If you have a 2-1 honors degree, there's a 4,000 euro scholarship. And if you have 2-2, two, two, there's 2,000 euros. If we have, there's a... It, in September, they have a Future Leader Scholarship Program, um, first class honors. You need a first class to apply for it, first class and, and your CV and scholarship form. You get 50% 50, 50 scholarship is for that. And there's a Women in Business Scholarship as well. It's also 50%. Um, at undergraduate level, there's between 20 to 30% scholarship available on the undergraduate programs. Manuel, I hope that answers your questions as well. Michael, um, in terms of studying in, in Ireland, um, you know, you, what's, what I would, it's one of the questions I always ask um, and kind of puts people on the spot is like, what's one place you recommend a student to go and check out once they arrive? Once they arrive, the Guinness Storehouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know, uh, you know, the Dub Dublin, Dublin City, we like, I know our, our international support team bring all the students on a, a walking tour of the, of the of the city. So we actually, we employ some students in our international office, about 15, 20 students uh, as peer mentors every year. So you can also sign up for that and you get paid to help other other students uh, settle in. Um, so we bring everyone on like walking tour of the city, show them where all the major points are. And then we have social events in the first uh, two months. Just some experience trips to bring students to the west of Ireland to try surfing on the west coast. Um, if you're from South Africa, I'm sure you better waves down there. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, you know, settle in, see, try and, um, you know, walk around the city. If you're interested in sports, not only join the college team, but also sports clubs are interested. I, I've seen students come over before from Zimbabwe and South Africa and join rugby clubs as well, cricket clubs, water polo clubs, soccer clubs. Um, the clubs are open and friendly and, you know, they always want to see new talent come along. You find a lot of international players on, in all the clubs. 
Um, very, obviously, interest in rugby. Ireland's good rugby nation as well as as, as South Africa. Um, and you, like we had our, our fair share of South Africans on the international Irish rugby team. So we, you know, mm. and they they did come in. You know, we do take them in, and you know, you might get into the the first team straight away. But you know, if you come in and prove yourself, you can work up through the through the through the levels. Um, and the clubs are all pretty pretty high tech pitches and uh, um, good training facilities. So if you're interested, I'm sure you have that in South Africa as well. But in, in Ireland, it's a, it's a pretty good setup. A lot a lot of uh, the, a lot of youth development as well. So people are interested in sports, mm. so at college level, school level. So they're constantly trying to um, you know get new new talent in. So they like to see international players coming in too. Yeah. Um, Michael, got another question here from Hannah. Um... I believe I believe it is yes, Hannah, um, who's asking, do you offer law? We don't offer law at NCI, but there is good good options in. Um, I know on the map there you had Trinity College Dublin. They offer law, uh, UCD, mm. most the uh, bigger universities and um, I just college there, Griffith College. They have a good law faculty as well. Yeah, um, could you do could you do like a business? Let's say you're doing your masters. Um, you know, could you do a business and then have some electives with some of law? Or is it is it purely just focusing on the business um, side of things, or the computer tech, for example? There, is, there is some law, like just legal implications and everything. I suppose you have regulation involved, and if you're doing a master's mm-hmm. in fintech, you have regulation because there's regulation coming down the the, the tracks for say the likes of cryptocurrencies or or other uh, other other things that might be there. We 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 don't. Because we don't have a faculty of law, we don't have full-on law. So if Hannah's looking specifically for, for law, she'll she will find good options for an LLB in law, um, in in Dublin. There's plenty of uh, there's probably you know five or five or six good options where you can do a good law degree, um, and then most of them are three-year honors degree. And then with options to go off and do in Ireland, we have common law system and, um. We, we don't have lawyers, we have solicitors and barristers. So barristers represent you in court, court and solicitors will take your case and um, do uh, everything from deeds and conveying to, um, you know, mm. pensions and, and, and other items. But it's, it's slightly split. Um, but yeah, generally people either go off and do the barrister of law exams or the solicitor exams. So they're, they're professional yeah. exams that you have to do after the, the law. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Hannah, if you'd like to send us an email, my email is george at global dash education. I will put it in the chat box here for everybody as well, um, as well as resharing Michael's contacts. We will be sharing this recording with all of you who've signed up for this webinar as well. Um, and then we do advertise them with all the schools that we work with and across all of our social media as well. So I will be in touch with all of you um, within the next 12 hours. Um, if anybody's got any more questions for Michael, um, otherwise he's answered most of my questions and probably me and him would end up talking about basketball. I'm not sure if you're well aware. Um, he's a six foot guy and uh, yeah, another tall guy like Nico as well. So we've got a lot of tall people working around global. Um, <laughs> George, if you want to sing, class. if you want to sing an Irish song, you go ahead there, George. I'll, uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're from Zimbabwe and a lot of our school songs, um, you know, even from South Africa as well, come from Ireland as well. Um, you know, the flower, the the flower, the flower of Scotland from there. They've got the Welsh, the Prince of Wales songs that go for Prince of Edward School in Zimbabwe. Yeah. Um, John's College, my our national so our school song came from Ireland. Um, Which school was that? St John's College. Oh yeah, I see. St John's won the uh, bagpipe uh, world championship there uh, two, a couple of years ago. I was in. I was in St yeah, John's at the. I was in St John's. They had the. Um, What's it? The the T Twenty Rams school event oh, was wow. on. We had a little uh, stand at that. <laughs> St John's were there, but uh, I've seen. I've been at the, some of the rugby matches there as well between St John's and St George's. Um, yeah, there's yeah. vibe in South Africa, especially when it comes to the sports side of things, and yeah. you know, that's, that's probably a reason why Ireland has got you know growing support for a lot of students is that synergies between the two countries. You know, a lot of people don't necessarily think of it being like-minded, but that family orientation, that small sort of city vibe, access to Europe as well. You know, it's a great destination. Um, yeah, and I know, I know, I know. Uh, you do have big agricultural uh, communities in 
in in in Zimbabwe and South Africa as well. Like we we don't offer it, but there is options in Ireland. Uh, we don't have our Ireland has small small farm holdings generally. <laughs> it's not done done on such a big scale because we're a smaller country. But there's good uh, agri- ag- agricultural science options as well in 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 Dublin and UCD and places like that. So. Um, yeah, and something to look into as well, if you're into agriculture, the small practice uh, medium coming through, especially in, in climate change and you know, reutilizing yeah. soil and fertilizers and that as well. So it is a great time to, to research it um, and not to plug in global again. But if you are interested in, in, in types of these courses and looking to find out more or would like to have a conversation with Michael, please do reach out to us. Um, and we'd gladly put you in touch for you know a consultation with either one of our senior counselors or with Michael directly. Um, Michael, if you want, to, I'm happy to close this off. I think it was a real good session. Um, yeah, thanks very much, George. And you covered it really well. Um, we will have, definitely be having you again till we can see you in South Africa for a beer as well. Yeah, I look um, forward to it. <laughs> so if you have any last words and you want to close it out, I'll leave it for you. I know. Just uh, thanks to everyone for listening. If any any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm happy to do a one on one one to one consultation with anybody. Um, we can have a Zoom again at a time that suits. Um, yeah, and uh, do if you think about Ireland, you will have a a warm a warm welcome. You can go and have a, a pint of Guinness at the Guinness Storehouse or trace your trace your Irish roots if you have any. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks thanks very much. Thanks George. Thanks Global. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully next time we're down in um, South Africa and Zimbabwe doing a, a global tour again around some schools. Absolutely. Cheers, Michael. Everybody Cheers, keep a good evening. Cheers. Thank you.